The question you want help with is how do you stop being so ADD, talking so much, and allowing your partner to feel like you care about them rather than you're just talking to them, talking at them, or you know, speaking their ear off so they can't really get involved in the situation. In fact, that's almost my way of showing I'm caring. I don't speak a bunch to people unless I do, but they need to know that I'm thinking about them in a way too. One of the really important parts to consider about a relationship is we call it a relationship, but we also call it a partnership. And in a partnership, we're looking for an equal input into the situation. Believe it or not, by you talking so much and leading with information and advice, you're preventing one of the most powerful parts of a relationship, and that is your partner helping you. Every single one of us has a need to feel needed. And whereas you're in a strong position, you're someone that has a lot of knowledge and a lot of ways to help people, your partner needs to know that they're important to you. Otherwise, they are the same as every other person you meet because I know you well enough to know that you constantly add value to everyone. So what makes them separate from the 200 other people that you meet every day? Yeah. Right? You're constantly helping people, constantly giving advice. Why are they special? Mm -hmm. The thing that will make them special is you letting them help you. I, I had this uh, wonderful relationship with a girl for many years, and we would go and visit her parents. And every time we visited her parents, she would pack up a bag of dirty laundry and bring it with us. And I would say to her, we have a cleaner that does our laundry. You don't need to pack up a bag of dirty laundry. She would collect it for like a few <laughs> days before we go. She goes, you don't understand. My mom needs to know that she's needed. And the only way my mom knows she's needed is if I turn up with a bag of laundry and I say to her, hey, mom, I'm so sorry. I didn't get a chance to do this laundry. Could you help? Oh my God. And it makes all the difference in her relationship with her mother. And I took that as a really powerful lesson in life. And I make sure that with all of my partners that I'm ever with, that I know what I need them for. And there are certain things that I absolutely point blank refuse to do for myself and act like I can't possibly do these things. Even though I am completely self-sufficient and lived on my own for like 10 years of my life. I lived in Africa, in another country, doing everything. I was washing my clothes in a sink because I didn't have a, a machine at the time to like clean my laundry, right? I, I work for myself, cook for myself, can, you know, can prepare any kind of meal, organize parties, events. I literally do not need any help with any domestic household chore whatsoever or in fact any part of life. And yet... Whenever I'm in a relationship, there are certain things I will just point blank refuse to do. And it's awkward. Sometimes I'll be like sitting on a sofa and I'm like, I am not going to make breakfast. Like, I'm just not going to do it. And I'll sit there and be like, man, I'm really hungry. Oh, so hungry. If only there was a way to get breakfast this morning. And I'm like putting out the hint for my partner to make breakfast. Now, on the flip side of that, it might make me sound like a horrible person, right? Like I'm just sitting there on my butt while I'm waiting for them to make me breakfast. But I'll tell you what happens. If I don't do that, and instead every morning I sit into the routine of just buying breakfast at Starbucks on the way to work, which is a really easy thing to do, I will rapidly notice a drop in the quality of my relationship as my partner will invariably say to me, sometimes I worry that you just don't need me. And it almost always happens because the reality is I don't need anyone. I am completely self-sufficient as are most people on the planet. Right. But your relationship will be significantly better if you know what you need your partner for and your partner knows what they need you for. I will constantly look at ways that I can help my partner, the same as you do naturally, but I'm also looking for ways that they can help me. Okay. I'm finding ways that they can support me in what I do. <clears throat> and not just in making breakfast, but in my business, in my career. I'll ask for advice. I will take entire business projects that I've outlined that I would normally only reserve bringing to like, you know, members of my company, and I'll sit down to my partner and say, hey, I've outlined this entire project. Could you give me some feedback on it? That is brilliant. At the same time, I'll also, when showing them something, if I can tell that they're overwhelmed with their own problems, I'll pull it back. And I won't ask for that help. On days when they're overwhelmed and stressed, they'll wake up and breakfast is just made. I don't need to ask them to make it or sit back and wait for them to make it because I also know when I need to help. And sometimes you're going to help a lot more by shouldering the burden of something versus you know, just trying to give them some advice. Actually doing the thing can make a big difference. Okay. Right. So uh, I'll give you a good example. Um, yeah. yeah. So my girlfriend, um, she used to lift things for a living. Sounds crazy, but she was a photographer in Hollywood, and she would constantly be lifting heavy bags and heavy cameras and whatnot. She developed a bad back. She developed all these awkward things. So when we first started dating, I made a promise of one way I'd help her. You will never lift a heavy thing again. 
there is no need for you to lift anything heavy if I'm standing next to you. And so as we moved on into our relationship, when a bag's heavy or I see her struggling with a book or a laptop, I take it off of her and I say, thanks ever so much, but I'm going to take this. This is going to be me. And by doing that, I have found a way to constantly add value to her. It's not just talking to her or forcing her to listen to me. This is where we have to be a little bit more sensitive about social norms as well. We live in a world where mansplaining is a genuine problem. Mansplaining is very simply the idea where a guy feels that his knowledge of a situation and advice is the most important advice, and he will explain to a woman everything that he feels that he needs to tell her. Missing the fact that she may already know the answer, yes. missing the fact she may already have um, the solution in her mind. Now, mansplaining actually, in my opinion, comes from a guy's desire to try to help by giving advice. Yeah, it's innocent. The funny thing about mansplaining is men also do it to each other. They'll constantly speak over each other, give advice over each other, and act like they're the expert or the authority. And where this comes from is almost irrelevant. Just it's needed to be known that sometimes it's innocent, sometimes a guy is just trying to add value, and sometimes it's oppressive. They're trying to control the other person. I believe that a large part of this comes from the fact that when women talk, they'll often talk because they want to have a discussion, not necessarily because they're looking for a resolution to a problem. Um, you'll see this a lot in relationships yeah. where, yeah, where a woman will feel the need to have a discussion with you and she's not looking for you to solve it. She knows how to solve it, but she wants to talk about it. She gets angry when you try to solve it sometimes. Because, frustrated. Frustrated because yeah. she doesn't want it solved yet. Yeah. There are times when she wants to solve it and it might not be that exact moment. And when you are like dismissive of the conversation and like, I got you, this is the solution, you're actually going to upset her because it's not what she's looking to get. It's big, man. <laughs> There is a big difference between what men and women want in a conversation. And there are lots of reasons for this. A large part of it comes back to our primal ancestry. If you think about early, the early adoption of language, remember that we learned language as we were becoming hunter-gatherers. That's when our period, when we started learning all this stuff. And there's a lot of evidence that male communication focuses a lot more on direct problem-solving communication because we needed to talk minimally when out hunting. That was the hunter part of the hunter-gatherer. Sure. Women as gatherers, that wasn't so much of a concern, but they needed to gather berries while also gathering information about people in the group. Then what would happen is when we all met back up in the evening, the guys would sit and listen to what the women said, and the women would describe what's going on inside the social group and catch the guy up on all the social norms, like who's doing the work, who isn't doing the work, who might be thinking about splintering off in their own group. The guys didn't need to have that conversation. They just focused on hunting and the key points they needed, and then they would go home and listen. Somewhere down the line, guys have now thought that after listening, we should also add a direction of what the women need to do. The women already know what to do. They've already worked it out or are in the process of working it out. They just want to talk it out, and they just want to have it out with somebody. So one of the key things I'll say in my relationship with my partner is after I've listened to the problem, and I'll spend a lot of like, oh, wow, what else, and get all the clarifying information, I'll say, do you want help with this? And they'll say to me, yes, or no, you know what, I think I've got it, this is what I'm gonna do. And I'm like, cool, I love that. Yeah. I think it's a great solution. That's gonna really help. <laughs> yeah, do you want help with this? Yeah, do you, do you want help with this? Would you like some advice? Would you like me to give you an idea of what to do? Or better, would you like me to give you an idea of what I think you might wanna do? Actually, you know, that makes so much sense. I remember there's this, it was, okay, I was with my dad, and um, then there was this biotech guy. We were on a safari. And by the way, there's vac the biotech guy just sold his biotech company. It, I don't know. It seemed like a lot. There's vacationing when you have a job and you're taking a break. There's vacationing after you sold your company. That looks like way more fun. <laughs> now, I described this problem to my dad. And he very quickly into it just gave me the solution. And it was the right solution, but I didn't take it. I then explained it to the, to the biotech guy. And he listened to it all and then gave the same solution. And I literally wrote the email. My dad's there going like, you know, his, his face is like, what the f***? And in his own words, he says, I, I just told you the same thing, what happened? And, it was cut, and I told him, I said, you know, I think I figured it out. You didn't listen to me all the way. So that kind of reminds me of what you just said. It's like, even if you are going to give a solution, that question of, do you want help with this? It's only possible if the person feels all the way understood. Right. I, didn't, I never really thought of it until you said it that way. And if more people, and I don't just mean guys, but people in general could move to a world of instead of just mansplaining and giving some of the, the advice, yeah. instead of they stopped, listened, got the whole story and said, do you need help with this? I think communication would resolve a lot better. And then instead, when I want to give advice, I'll say to my partner, hey, 
um, I've got this really cool thing that I'm thinking about. Do you mind if I share it with you? And I'll get permission to share a cool piece of advice. But it's not just permission, it's an opt-in. It's the other person saying, yes, I do want to hear your advice. Yes, I do want to hear what you have to say. And then I'll break it down. So in fact, I had a lovely conversation with my girlfriend the other day in this exact way where I wanted to show her one of the things I've been thinking about with memory. And I know that this is going to be a really big part of what I teach in dating and when I'm helping people with other problems in their life. But I wanted to sound out some of my early content before I've written it into a speech yet because I thought she might really appreciate that point of view. Yeah, oh man, this, this is going to help so much. If I, if I actually can do this, I'm going to do this. <laughs> I love that changing yeah. wording. Dude, thanks ever so much. Okay.